Yeah. No, see, no. All right. And so um, I invite everyone, including myself, to, to turn on your mute button. And we're going to receive our prelude from Roger. Okay, so you didn't hear me thank Roger and you didn't hear me say, isn't it wonderful to hear our organ, um, even when we're not able to be together in the sanctuary, it's lovely that we can listen to the organ together. So thank you, Roger, for safely bringing that to us. And at this time, I would like to invite Bill Burwell to share an announcement with us. Got to unmute first. <clears throat> um, Dan Nace was looking about the church here in October and discovered that our uh, commercial hot water heater that serves the kitchen was leaking. And that hot water he heater had been in service since uh, September uh, 1995. It's time to replace it. And the, uh, uh, the trustees took a look at and made the decision to go towards a tankless uh, on-demand hot water heater it saves lots of natural gas. In the long run, it's the best option. Unfortunately, it's expensive, about $4,000. And so in looking about uh, contacting the gas company, I think Dan did, is there any you know, rebates or anything? We also thought about, well, let's talk to Suzanne Nevin with the food bank, and she's very well connected in this community, a real go-getter and see if she knows of any organization that would be interested in giving us a hand. 
not to, and made very clear, not interested in having food bank help us because they got so much on their plate. Well, <clears throat> uh, the next day, the food bank uh, uh, directors gave us a check for $4,000 for that <clears throat> new hot water heating system. We were just amazed. We just flabbergasted uh, that, the, that our friends uh, at the food bank would be so generous to us. They do use our facility a lot, uh, but uh, it just blows away. I have good friends in this community uh, and be a part of this community uh, is a real blessing. So if you get a chance, if you know Suzanne or someone on the food bank board, thank them for us. Uh, we can't be more thankful. Thank you so much um, for that beautiful announcement, Bill. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And we were reaching out to Suzanne to ask her if she had any recommendations for us to apply for a grant somewhere. And um, um, so we're just feeling so grateful. United Church of Ferndale, we're doing God's work and we're being blessed through it. So um, at this time, I would like to invite Veronica to share an announcement. Hi there. Hopefully you can all hear me. My internet is unstable, apparently. Um, but I wanted to let everyone know that's responded in, re in uh, reference to the anthem that we uh, have been invited to sing. Um, it's Sing to the Lord of sing to the oh my gosh I of the remember. harvest of harvest yes and um so we have the opportunity to record ourselves individually and then send that recording in so they can compile the all the the parts together and do a virtual choir um, so we have about six people, I think, that have responded. Um, and if you are still interested, let me know and I can send you out the information on how to do a recording and how to get the backing tracks or the practice tracks for each individual part. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any interest in participating in that. And it's for the Thanksgiving Eve worship service. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from Ensley and Berkeley. Good morning. This year, because of COVID-19, Interfaith is asking for gift cards to give to families, cards to grocery stores and one-stop shopping like Fred Meyer or Target or Walmart, and cards for gas, inexpensive restaurants, movies, or haircuts. We'll gather the cards and deliver to Interfaith by November 30th. Masked drivers can pick up at your home. They can also shop for you. See details in the Interfaith Note in the e-news. Well done, ladies. And it's so good to have you at worship this morning. And I have another opportunity for people who are just longing to sing. We have received an invitation from our United Methodist. Um, what's the word that I want? Um, conference. And so hang tight and I'll share that announcement. There's nothing playing yet. Um. And you're muted and you can't hear. You. 
Okay, I'm unmuted. Let's see if you can hear it now. Greetings. I'm James Payne, music director at Clarkson United Methodist Church in Clarkson, Washington. During this time, we long to be together. Although we cannot physically be together, we can join together in song and worship from a distance. I'm inviting you, the choirs and singers and musicians alike in the Pacific Northwest Conference of the United Methodist Church to join me in a mass virtual choir to celebrate the season of Advent. Thank you. Did, did you hear it that time? Yes. Okay. Did you see it? No. Okay. Sorry about that, guys, but you got to hear it. So if there is anyone, if there is anyone who is interested in being a part of that virtual choir, um, we have the invitation with all of the information. We'll be happy to put that out there. Okay, I need to center. So let I bet we all do. <laughs> let us center ourselves. And I would like to begin. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascades watershed from time immemorial. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. And may we commit to working alongside our neighbors to protect Mother Earth. When my brother and sister-in-law lived in Oman, Soile Pasi and I were able to visit a mosque and it was a holy experience. Here in Whatcom County, I had the opportunity with many of you to be welcomed to our county Sikh communities worship space for a gathering of worship and an opportunity to come together in peace. While in the Holy Land with some of you, we also visited a mosque that was shared with a um, Jewish temple on the other side. I have attended many retreats using the labyrinth and have visited many church settings. All of these experiences that I have just named and that I have experienced in my own life share a common theme. And that has been to center myself, to center their selves, to feel the holy. Because of some kind of a ritual of preparing mind and body and spirit for entering into a sacred space to worship God. This is the time for us this morning to center ourselves. I invite you to join with me by centering yourself wherever you are. If you're sitting in a chair or if you're sitting on a sofa, and then I invite you to allow that piece of furniture to hold you. And if you feel comfortable to gently close your eyes and breathe in deeply, trusting that you're in a safe place. And when you're ready, blow out that air to make room for spirit to enter into your body. Breathe in the Holy Spirit of love. Hold it there. Settle in the silence of your heart. And breathe out with God's holy grace. One more time, let us collectively breathe in the presence of Christ in our very midst, 
hold that breath. And when you are ready, breathe out all distractions so that you can be totally in this moment, in this time of worship, worship of the divine who has already been here and has already been here through time and space. Come, let us worship, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, know that you are welcome here. Please join me in our first hymn, Gather Us In. Thank you, Veronica, that was beautiful. Will you join me in the opening prayer? Gracious one, we humbly come before you this day to prepare for the way you have set before us. Help us to recognize the signs of your arrival so we can have our lamps filled with oil to light the way. Thank you for the invitation to be your people in this time and space. May we live into the potential you have in mind for each of us. Amen. At this time in our worship service, we offer the passing of the peace. When we fulfill Christ's commandment to love, we live in unity with Jesus and with one another. Let us celebrate our unity by sharing the signs of Christ's peace with one another.
Peace be with you. And also with you. So I'm going to talk to everyone. Oh, you know what? This is sign language for I love you. I don't know how many of you know what this means in sign language. It's something that I do with my family. It means I really love you. <laughs> so I love you and I really love you. That's God's message to all of us today. Um, there is a psalm that is a part of our lectionary today, and those that just means a big word of what we read um, all week to prepare us for Sunday morning. And in, if you're wondering where you find those lessons for like next Sunday, they're in the back of your bulletin, so be sure to look them up. But one of the psalms for today is Psalm 78, and I pulled out verse number four, and this comes to us from um, the voice. So listen here. We will not keep these things secret from our children. Rather, we will tell the coming generation all about the praise that is due to the eternal one. We will tell them about God's strength, power, and wonders. Where have you seen God this past week? And so I am asking the children, have you seen God in your midst this past week? And if you have, if you can recognize where you've seen God, I invite you to push your space button or unmute yourself and just say, where have you seen the presence of God this week? And if it's too hard, I'm going to turn to the adults. So the adults better start thinking about it. Okay. Uh, Shakimi, I see your hand up. What did, where have you seen God this week? Um, I haven't seen God this week. You, you haven't? Yes. Okay. Has anybody seen the presence of God this week? Me. Me? Who was me? Okay, go ahead. In nature and prayer time and when you wake up and go. Okay, I heard in nature, in prayer time. I missed the last one. You, you see him in prayer time. You see him when you wake up because he helps you wake up, go to sleep, and you also see him in nature. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone else agree with that? I think I, I think that I have seen God in this last week. Um, right here this morning in the announcements that were made today. Um, we're living in the coronavirus pandemic and um, the people on the board of the Ferndale Food Bank understand how much we as a church care for God's people in the wider community and they're helping us get a new hot water tank. And that is so precious that it moves people like Bill to tears to think that how we can come together as a whole community to continue doing God's work. That's the face of God, right? Um, when, when Inslee and Berkeley are made it to church today so we could see their beautiful faces and they were here to share with us that um, there are ways for us to safely care for our sisters and brothers and moms and dads who are experiencing homelessness and finding home, shelter, safety through our Interfaith Coalition programs. And we have a safe way to help them have happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, right? I mean, that's the face of God in the midst of that. Anytime we're sharing love, we are experiencing the presence of God. Maybe we don't know what God's face looks like unless we turn and look at the person in the square next to us and see the little shining in their light, in their eyes, 
we see the face of God in each other, right? That's the good news. And this psalm is particularly precious to me because it's saying, grown-ups, we have to share the good news of God's love with our children. We have to remember to do that. We have to remember to do that with our grandchildren. And so today is an opportunity for you, if you're a grown-up or if you're a child, the sun is shining brightly outside. The sky is so blue. We walk upon, we have the opportunity to walk upon God's beautiful creation and notice where God's presence is in our world, inside of us and all around us. We cannot escape it. <laughs> that is good news. And so I offer up to you this prayer. Oh, gracious and beloved God, thank you. Thank you for always being there before we even show up. Help us to continue to see you in our world in the smallest and in the largest ways. Help us to remember that when we look at our neighbors, we're looking into the face of God. Mm. Thanks be to you. Amen. And how do we keep that going, Veronica? Through singing and song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what answer are you looking for? <laughs> uh, let's sing to the children. May the love of God fill you from your head down to your toes. May it wiggle through your fingers and dance upon your nose. May the people all around you help you live so loving grows. May the love of God fill you up until it overflows. We can't hear you, Bobby. All right. What I wanted to say is that so pre-COVID, the children were always taking off for Children's Chapel during that song. I don't know if you ever heard it sung all the way through. And so I'm loving that you're all learning every single word of that song. So thank you for joining in today. And now... Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. As we center our hearts in prayer, let us do so with the knowledge that through the ages, our creator God has listened intently and responded silently to each prayer that we've uttered. Let us hold some space to hear now in our public prayer, those silent prayers that we hold together on the prayer chain. Surrounding Dan and Libby's family with our prayers as they tenderly care for the passing that has happened this morning. Dan's mother had died and he is surrounding his father with our tender support and love and their family love. Oh God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. Mm. Yes, go ahead, Veronica, you and Trish. Um, we're mindful of all of the people that are grieving across our nation for whatever reason that they find grief today, we want to acknowledge it. And we want to remember that we are all able to receive that blessing of God's love in our heart. And it's our responsibility to share it with one another. Oh God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. 
holy of the holiest, Ama Abba, the great I am. We are tending our hearts these days, and we pray for your grace in the days before us. It is in our collective humility that we can come into your presence for the healing of our nation. O oh God of grace and glory, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. answer. Our community is rattled with loved ones who are suffering mentally, physically, and emotionally. Grant us with your eternal light of love to support one another during this era of pandemic. Ever present one, keep us alert and ready for your arrival into our lives and keep us fit in our faith to be ready to accept your invitation to the celebration of unity and love. Oh God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. For what else do we pray this morning? I want to lift uh, our, our, our Howard that uh, was in the hospital and for Linda's family with their loss. Oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love, answer. For our country, that we see a smooth transition of power. Oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love, answer. For the people who are isolated in um, senior care facilities and those who cannot get onto the internet to interact with people. Oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love, answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We join together with all of our voices to pray for those experiencing homelessness and for those who are grieving along with their families. Thank you, Ron, for holding Dan in prayer. Oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love, answer. I want to remember Nigeria and um, which Kiki has brought to us before, and they continue to have such unrest there. And we pray that they may find a way for peacefulness for all their people. Amen. Oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love, answer. Mm. Let us pray for celebrations of birthdays, um, young and old. Yes. For those celebrating birthdays, those who are um, waiting for new family members to arrive, and for those um, all across the age spectrum, oh God, thank you for the gift of life. Oh God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And we know that there are people out there who are... Um, struggling with drug addiction and despair and with health issues. And um, the truth is that we are all in this together. And so we ask you, dear God, to hear our prayers. And in your, and love, in your love, answer. Father, mother, creator of all that is and all that will be, hear us now as we unite our voices May they flow together with the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we pray with all the disciples of Jesus across time and space, saying together, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to share with me the prayer of illumination. God of grace, we come seeking your guidance for the road ahead. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds to be ready for you. Thank you for giving us Jesus as an example of how to live our lives devoted to your love, for your justice, in your peace. Help us to hear Christ's wisdom today through the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. Please hear these words from the 25th chapter of Matthew verses one through three, or one through 13. God's kingdom is like 10 young virgins who took oil lamps and went out to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The silly virgins took lamps, but no extra oil. The smart virgins took jars of oil to feed their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him, and they all fell asleep. In the middle of the night, someone yelled out, he's here, the bridegroom's here, go out and greet him. The 10 virgins got up and got their lamps ready. The silly virgins said to the smart ones, our lamps are going out, lend us some of your oil. They answered, there might not be enough to go around. Go buy your own. They did, but when they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. When everyone who was there to greet him had gone into the wedding feast, the door was locked. Much later, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked on the door saying, Master, we're here, let us in. He answered, I do not know you. I don't think I know you. So stay alert. You have no idea when Christ might arrive. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh, beloved God, our rock and our redeemer, whose truth and light continue to enlighten us in wonderful and mysterious ways. Thanks be to you. Amen. So I just want to begin by saying I chose this scripture a long time ago, months ago for today. Um, and, and I've struggled with it because according to this parable, uh, according to this parable, Jesus said the kingdom of God is like you're prepared or you're not prepared. And um that some will get in and some, can you not hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, good. Um, that there are people who are not prepared and therefore they knock on the door and they can't get in because they ran to get their oil. So let's think about this. How many choices have you made in your life? Hmm. 
hard to count, right? We make choices the moment that we open our eyes in the morning. I love what Ola said, that God wakes him up in the morning. But the truth is, we can choose to feel God's presence with us when we are tapped and woken up gently in the morning. And we can decide if we're going to get out of bed or not, right? I mean, for some of us, that's a struggle. And I bet some of us don't even have the choice if we are wanting to get out of bed or not. There are those that are unable to get out of bed. And there are those who have to force themselves to get out of bed because their bodies don't want them to. Now, for many of us, we decide if we're going to get dressed or not. In fact, I bet that there are some of us who decide that we're only going to get dressed halfway. And I could ask us, you know, let's be honest, how many of us are wearing pajama bottoms today? <laughs> yeah, it's good. We're in, a, we're in an era when that's okay. And if you're going to get dressed up all the way, it's a decision, right? I have forced myself throughout this pandemic to get up and get dressed up all the way every day, just so I have something that feels normal. And I know that there's people out there. I know that I have grandsons who make the choice every morning that they're gonna stay in their pajamas all the way, all day. There are a lot of choices that we have before us. This past week, the citizens of the United States, 18 years and older, had a civic duty to make some choices. And it took, and it's still taking a long time to count all of those choices. For some of us, we felt patient through the process. For some of us, we even fell asleep through the process. For some of us, we felt anxious. And I hope for all of us that we spent some quality time in prayer. What would it look like if all of humankind, I'm not just talking about the United States of America, I'm thinking about worldwide, what would it look like if all humankind got to choose what the reality of God's love looks like? The truth is that some of us think that we have that choice, don't we? There are some who put parameters on who God loves and who God doesn't love. And some of us are trying to put conditions on God's love to make ourselves feel safer. Some of us have life experiences that makes God's love real. And some of us are still longing to see and to hear and to taste and to smell what God's love feels like. And the truth is, my friends, that none of us holds the whole truth. We need one another. And we need to recognize and actuate God's love within our hearts and around us. I believe the truth is God's love is not our choice to vote on. The mystery is not who receives it or when or how, or how we, our choice is how we prepare to recognize it. Just like those young virgins waiting for the bridegroom to arrive, 
we have a choice on how we prepare ourselves. And when we try to make our business of who is in and who is out, we will have to suffer the consequences. So what can we do to prepare? We can choose to share the wisdom of God's holy mystery with our littles, those who are young. Just like my grandmother shared her faith with me that has made me who I am today, it's our choice if we share that with the young people in our own lives. But we cannot share it with the young ones in our church community or in our personal lives unless we are prepared ourselves so that people around us can recognize the spark of God's unconditional love inside of us. It's like tending to the oil in our lamps as we wait for the arrival of the Prince of Peace, the Bridegroom, the Anointed One, the One that we call Christ. Choosing to live the way of Jesus, I believe means accepting the deep mystery that we label God and following the Divine One changes everything. We are called to be God's vision of unity beyond social, political, economical, racial, age, gender identity, and the structures of the created boundaries of national, religious, and the towers of battles that choose to divide people. The ministry of the United Church of Ferndale, if you choose to take your faith seriously, means that we must be persistent voices for equity that includes equality. United Church of Ferndale, if you choose to take your faith seriously, you are called to help one another to teach our children well so that they will be ready mm -hmm. to ignite their sparks of passion when called upon. United Church of Ferndale. If you choose to love God as you have been loved by God, then you are called to be patient with those who speak and act like you, as well as those who think and act differently than you. Like the bridesmaid in the waiting room. We don't know when Christ will arrive. However, we have a choice. Whom will you serve? And are you ready to do that? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Our second hymn today is 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman. Holy 
Thank you, Veronica. Thank you so much. We have a group from the Interfaith Coalition of Whatcom County, and they're going to share about how um, it has brought brought us together in our faith to to make this world a better place. Hi, I'm Janie Pemble. I work for Interfaith Coalition. I'm the outreach manager, but probably more importantly, I'm the liaison with all of our member congregations. And I have the absolute delight to be able to work with uh, the representatives of each congregation, including Loretta uh, and Marta, and then work with board members as well, like Raquel. Um, that is a very impactful position because of, in a unique way, I am in uh, the position to see the most of what God's grace affects in our work in the community. Um, I am witness to the amazing service and generosity that every congregation uh, that's involved in interfaith um, shows towards our neighbors in need. Um, United Church of Ferndale has been and is one of our most active congregations. Uh, I can't tell you how much um, within the staff at, at Interfaith Coalition that we honor and love you for your tremendous response to the needs in our community. Um, I have a saying sometimes that I apply to, to a congregation, um, small but mighty, and that definitely describes United Church of Ferndale. When COVID hit this year, um, of course it took everybody by surprise, and the number one question in everybody's mind was, 
well, what's going to happen? Because a nonprofit organization depends upon people's generosity. And the first thing that happened after COVID hit was our auction. And uh. it was it was quite the, the scary thing, but members of our staff pivoted and put the auction online. And one of the miracles of the year was that our auction was pretty darn successful. Uh, it, we wound up um, being gifted with the resources to really continue through the year and offer our programs because of the generosity of people at United Church of Ferndale and, and others. The other thing that I think is really personally important to me and as well as how it applies to Interfaith Coalition is when COVID hit, uh, everybody I think sees or saw and felt fear. And it is a mark of the deep faithfulness of our congregations that this fear transformed itself into acts of good, into acts of incredible generosity uh, towards our families in our transitional housing, family promise, um, our cast food on the streets program, and everything else that that Interfit does. Um, I, working from home like everybody else, trying to navigate this way. What are we going to do? How are, how are we going to do it? And the very first problem that I had was the immense overflow of people calling and emailing saying, what can I do? And that includes people like Lisa Blum and, L and Loretta and other folks um, that I know are very active with interfaith. So it, I think COVID is showed us that the power of good and the power of caring is kind of like when you watch water coming down a hill and it hits a rock or a trunk, it doesn't stop the water. The water finds another way. And that's that's how I have seen uh, the effects of COVID on the families that we serve at Interfaith. Um, the volunteers who said, to heck with this, we're going to come feed the people on the streets at CAST. Uh, the, very creative people who found a way to serve family promise families. So I really do think that when we react with faith and trust, that immense good comes of it. And I know that I have been witness up to that through Interfaith for Coalition. Awesome. Hi, I'm Lisa Blum, and I'm here speaking today as your Family Promise Volunteer Coordinator. Family Promise is a division of the Interfaith Coalition. Um, most of you know we house, um, we were housing and feeding families experiencing homelessness in local churches. Um, COVID has changed things a lot for Family Promise um, because they have to limit um, contact between people, keep everyone safe. I have ended up pretty much being the only person in our congregation that still has hands-on access to the Family Promise um, staff and the families. That doesn't mean that our, our work isn't done. COVID has changed a lot, um, but every time I see the, the, the phrase, God is still, still speaking, I think, you know what, God is still doing, and God is using us to continue to do things during this pandemic. God said, pandemic, been there, done that. This is what I want you to do. And, and I have seen that through Family Promise. Um, we've hosted twice now during the pandemic, and each time I've just pretty much put, put out a call for meals. Each time I get way more volunteers that I need. People are cooking. Um, I've been going around and collecting the meals from people at their homes, bringing them to the day center, and the day, the day center staff is, is getting them to the families. Um, there are also people in our congregation, not just me, but other people who have gone to help at um, Family Promise Day Center over on Baker View. They had to do some moving and some cleaning recently, and there was four or five of us in there, all masked and gloved, um, cleaning and moving equipment. So um, it's, it's made things different, but it, it hasn't changed the fact that, that God is still calling us to um, take care of the families in our, in our area that are experiencing homelessness. And I'm always overwhelmed by the support I get whenever I ask for help. Thank you, Lisa.
I'm Loretta Tedro, and I'm the congregational representative from United Church of Ferndale to the Interfaith Coalition. Participation in Interfaith has to do with um, something that happened early in the summer. There was a need for cleaning and painting one of the um, transitional housing units in Ferndale, and that revealed two things. One was that the needs don't stop for a pandemic. There were still families needing housing and there was work to be done. And what we found, the group of us who worked on that house, was that we could figure out how to do the work and keep ourselves safe and keep others safe so that the house was ready when the new family was needing to move in. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Raquel Hansen, and I am on the board of directors uh, for uh, Interfaith Coalition um, as a United Church uh, Ferndale member. And uh, how COVID has affected, um, I'm going to say the work of the board. Uh, and the way it's impacted us, I don't, I don't think has been nearly as much as it has impacted those of you who are directly on the front lines working with our families. Um, but I would say that uh, we obviously don't get to get to meet on our in our monthly meetings together. We're having to do our meetings through Zoom, like many of you are, are doing those types of things. Um, and we're still making sure that uh, the uh, interfaith and, and the employees and the executive director are able to function and do what they need to do in order to meet the needs of our community and provide the necessary resources for those of you who are out there helping um, those, those in our community who interfaith helps as well. Um, probably one of the biggest impacts that we had this year is we were looking for a new executive director uh, we had to do all of that uh, online, um, but uh, it turned out well, and we are so very happy to have Deanna with us, and um, it's it's been good. We will be happy when we can see each other face to face again. Um, but overall, it's 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 been um, it's been an interesting experience to say the least, as it has been for for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. That was beautiful. And we continue to be partners with Interfaith Coalition and continue to do good works in God's name. My friends, we are blessed by the Creator's gift of life. May our gratitude be generous as we honor the presence of redeeming love in our lives. Help us make a commitment to present the offerings of our hands, our hearts, and our very lives with gratitude. As we prepare our offering, please say a prayer for the mission and ministry of this church. You can send your donation to the church at Post Office Box 186, Ferndale, Washington, 98248, or visit our work, website at ucf1.org and look for the donation button. For the gifts we receive, we give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. Please join me in the doxology. Do we want to? Do we want to um, pray the prayer of dedication first? Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved Creator, accept the gifts we offer in gratitude for your grace in our lives. Bless all that we have, that they may bring healing where there is hurt, compassion 
where there is indifference and new beginnings where there has been change. O oh God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Amen. And now, Veronica. Apology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And for our final hymn today, we have, I'm going to live so God can use me. And I've switched the lyrics a little bit, just so you know, I'm going to be doing any time, Lord, anywhere, instead of anywhere, Lord, anytime. So you'll get it. So here we go. gonna live so God can use me anytime Lord in anywhere I'm gonna live so God can use me anytime Lord in anywhere I'm gonna work Thank you, Veronica. Did anyone else have the feeling that you were at a sports event and you looked up on the big screen and saw yourself there? <laughs> that was fun. Thank you, Rebecca, for always keeping us on our toes. Oh, dear ones. With your hearts ablaze with God's love, light your lamps of hope. Get prepared with the assurance it is worth the wait for Christ to arrive. Go with the peace of heart that this too shall pass and all will be well. All will be well in all things. Please be well. Amen. I've we're going to listen to the postlude, and as we're getting ready for that, I would like to thank everyone who helped to be a part of the leadership of this worship service. It's so delightful to come together. And um, for all of you who have, have joined us on Facebook Live, I see your names and that warms my heart. And for all of you who I can't see because you're out in the community watching us on YouTube or on a DVD, um, just know. We love you. We miss you all. 
we're glad that you join us for worship. Amen. What a joy it is to be together. Thank you for joining us for worship today. And for those who would like to stay for a, um, a breakout room to say hello to one another a little more intimately, please stay with us. And I do wanna remind the trustees that at noon, um, we're going to be meeting for property management trustees meetings. So the life of the church goes on ready or not. And um, I, um, oh yes, and Beth, um, Beth's friend Dawn is turning 80 today. So yeah, today's his 80th birthday and he's online. So if everyone wants to just say happy birthday to Dawn. He's here. <laughs> happy birthday, Dawn. Happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. You muted, Dawn. Happy birthday. <laughs> 